Okay, so let's just set up another meeting, just quickly finish off these um, essentials. So I'm just going to go and call it a Teams meeting. And I'm going to invite uh, Phoebe again into this meeting um, so that, and I, I just, yeah, uh, I got two people into this meeting. So this is a Teams meeting. Now you can, if necessary, probably not internally, but you can now hide attendee lists. And I, I know a, a couple of people that I've worked with over the years where they found that quite um, frustrating or, you know, they're, they're using Outlook for very specific reasons and they don't want the attendee list shared. With meetings, you can, of course, forward them on. And sometimes when we set up training sessions, people forward them on to a personal email account or something like that because they want to pick it up maybe on a tablet or they might decide, oh, I'd like somebody else to join this meeting. Do you want that? Do you want to have that happening? Or do you want control over who's attending your meeting? And then there's the request responses. If you're sending out a meeting and you're just quite happy just to send that meeting out, you don't have to have responses now either. And we look at a couple of the settings in there. There's a lot around um, meetings, really. So I can go to my scheduling assistant. Now, my scheduling assistant will enable me to see if my colleagues are free or not. So I can simply sort of drag that uh, across in there. And I only may want to show my working hours, so I don't want to have a meeting at six o'clock tonight. Again, I can pop the time zones on if I want to. I can increase the time in here. But this is really important that you can see the availability um, of your colleagues and we click back to our event and we can send the meeting. So you can send it knowing. The next step on that one is, have you tried using the scheduling poll? Now, this is a feature, fairly new feature, that enables us to gather responses about the best time for a meeting. Now, how many of you, um, and raise your hands, and oh, I would think it's probably the majority, have tried to set up a meeting and ping-ponged emails. Can you make this day? And you send it to three people. No, I can't make that day. Then they send it back. Can I make that day? No, I can't. You know, the email ping pong, like table tennis, when you're trying to set up a meeting. Yeah, I know it does. It happens to all of us. So Outlook have got this great feature for the scheduling poll in here that enables you to decide on some options that everybody can just pick their favourites. So let's say we want a meeting on Monday. It actually is looking at diaries where possible. So I might want to try a meeting on there at four o'clock and 4.30. I can go to different days and I could pick a 5.30. So I have three times selected. It's a Teams meeting, so I don't need a location and I have got three options. I generally tend to work with three. You give people too many and it becomes even more confusing because the other thing with this scheduling poll is it holds the time in your diary. So you do want people to respond to it quite quickly and you don't want too many slots held up. 
So if we go to manage the poll settings, what it's saying here is it was schedule when all the attendees agree when the when a, a consensus is. You don't have to have the hold, but I tend to leave it in there. Hold selected times because otherwise then I give that time to somebody else who wants a, a training session and then it's gone and then I my poll comes in. So it, it depends on what you do. Do I want to know? Do I need attendees to verify themselves? And do I lock polls just for the attendees? So you've got all these settings. So it's like using the, the, the poll uh, functionality here. And it sends an email out with my meeting, whatever it's about. And that will send 